After Elon Musk's endorsement of Signal, their user base has gone up by over 4,000%. It's good to see that normies are starting to take their privacy a bit more seriously, even if the switch was facilitated by a celebrity endorsement instead of everybody just doing their own research and coming to the conclusion that Signal is better than WhatsApp. But despite the good news, there are some negative side effects that veteran Signal users like myself have been noticing and is also making some new users drop Signal immediately because they think this is just how the application is. Their servers are struggling to keep up with the rapid spike in traffic. You might have seen this on your own Signal app today where it says that you know they're, they've been experiencing technical difficulties and because Signal doesn't have a peer-to-peer -peer or federated option, these issues are likely going to continue until the Signal team is able to expand their server infrastructure to keep up with the demand. Now, during the migration to Signal, I've also noticed that a lot of people are asking about other private messaging applications, both in my own comment section and on other places like Reddit. I even had my German friend today ask me about an application called Threema after he installed Signal and started messaging me on it. So I figured that it would be helpful for me to do a series of videos where I give my opinion on each of these different applications that people have been asking me about, starting with Threema. So Threema is an open source private messaging application. In fact, it just recently became open source in the past few months. Uh, now I know that people on this channel that I've been watching for a while, you probably already know why open source is important, but for the new people, you should always put more trust into open source or better yet free or Libre software than closed source alternatives, because it is very easy for someone to per to program an app to just do bad things in the background, like spy on you, steal information, uh, give backdoor access to your device without you or an antivirus program being able to detect it. All of these things could be going on in the background while the app appears to just be functioning normally. And even reverse engineering and programming experts, they can have a difficult time figuring out what exactly a closed source program is doing without looking at the source code. And the same need for open source applies to the protocols that are used to perform the end-to-end -end encryption in the app as well. Both Threema and Signal have open source protocols, but WhatsApp, for example, uses a proprietary fork of Signal's protocol, which means that Facebook could have just built a backdoor into WhatsApp's encryption itself in order to gain access to messages that are supposed to be end-to-end -end encrypted and thus hidden from Facebook. Now, Threema is not free as in price, so even though it is open source, and you can compile your own, you, you, know, you can build your own from source, there is a license check that needs to be done with a valid activation code for it to work. Now, this is both a good thing and a bad thing. Obviously, since it's a paid app, it might be more difficult for you to get your friends to install it because they're probably just going to go into the app store and see that it's $2.99 and go, yeah, I'm, not, I'm just going to use Signal because, you know, that's free. It doesn't cost me any money and I don't really like paying for apps. Uh, I don't think a lot of people really pay for software in general these days. But the benefit is that this company is at least able to make some money, which like it or not, is often necessary to keep the development of good software going without the software being, you know, turned into spyware. Because, you know, take WhatsApp, for example. It didn't start off as spyware, but then eventually it got sold to Facebook because they wanted to make money, and now Facebook controls it, and they're slowly uh, just turning it into essentially a spying tool, just like Facebook and all of their other products. Uh, so yeah, they don't have to make money through spyware. They're getting paid by the end users to use the software. You know, you've probably heard the saying that when software is free, you are the product, and more often than not, that is the case. And as their user base grows, their ability to provide for those users should grow as well. It should grow according to the number of users, because that's the problem that we're seeing with Signal. There's 
40 times as many people that are using it than have been using it for the years and years it's been around. Um, but I guess the signal devs don't really have enough money on hand to just roll out 40 times the server power to deal with the influx. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that with Threema, they run all of their own server. So this is another thing where it's kind of a pro and a con depending on how you look at it. Uh, one of the pros is that you don't have to worry about your information going through like Amazon servers or, well, it might ultimately go through some Amazon servers and it being routed to you just because there's so many out there. Um, but it doesn't uh, really get stored on their servers temporarily or anything like that. Uh, it's not going through any other servers that are not under their control. So it's both a pro and a con. Uh, the way that it would be a con is that in order for Threema to set up more servers, it might end up costing them more because generally, if you wanted to spin up an equal amount of server power uh, compared to using like AWS or actually getting your own your own hardware and your own bandwidth that's all under your control, usually it's more expensive to do it that way. Which is why you see so many companies moving to using infrastructure as a service anyway. Uh, so now let's take a look at identification. So you've probably heard uh, people criticize Signal for requiring a phone number to sign up. Now, contrary to popular belief, Signal does not actually store your phone number. It's only used for the registration. And you can even register with a phone number that's different than the phone or device that you intend to use it with because you, know, you can use Signal from an iPod, you can use it from a, uh, a desktop. It, can work on devices that don't have SIM cards, so that's not that's not necessary for it to actually work. Um, it's just for signing up. So yeah, you can use a burner phone. Uh, you can use like one of those free SMS apps that you can download in the App Store. There's like dozens of them, and all you really have to do is once you create your account through that, you want to secure it with a PIN so that. Once that phone number gets recycled, whether it's an SMS app or it's a burner phone that you go buy, if you don't continue that service, then it's going to eventually go to someone else. And as long as your account is secured with a PIN, that person wouldn't be able to access your Signal account without entering it. But Threema doesn't require a phone number or an email to sign up. All that is required is your Threema ID, which is randomly generated on your device through random input, like moving your mouse around or moving your finger on the touch screen. And then you do have the option of giving your phone number and email to Threema, and that's just so that users can find you uh, more easily with that information. But like I said, it's not necessary to use the service. So the only potential links between uh, Threema and you is going to happen when you go to pay for the service. Because of course, the Apple App Store and Google Play Store, they do not accept anonymous payments, they don't take cash or crypto, and they require you to have an account with a company that has questionable privacy policies. Uh, so luckily, you can purchase it directly through their website, which is going to bring you to this page. So using the App Store can be avoided, uh, but they do require an email, but this really shouldn't be such a big deal because I mean, you can just use an anonymous uh, email client on Tor or whatever to avoid uh, actually identifying yourself. So you can just use you know, whatever email like that. Uh, you accept their terms of service, but then when you proceed to the payment section, this is where I actually have a bit of a problem with Threema. So we take a look at the options available to us, bank transfer, PayPal, MasterCard, Visa, or Bitcoin. There really isn't any good way to pay for Threema anonymously, and they even falsely state that you can pay anonymously with Bitcoin, which just further perpetuates this myth that Bitcoin is anonymous when it almost always is not. There is no inherent anonymity to Bitcoin. 
all of the transactions that are made between every wallet for all of time is public. It's on the blockchain and there's no technology that is built into Bitcoin to conceal a user's true crypto wallet address with ring signatures or mixing networks like we see built into Monero and other privacy coins. If you have Bitcoin right now, you probably got it from an exchange which requires a lot of private information to sign up with. In fact, more information than you would typically need to get a credit card or a PayPal account. So if you made a wallet with an exchange, all of your crypto that is purchased through it and wallets that are generated by it are connected to you. The only real option to get a completely private and anonymous Threema account with no information leading back to you would be to first obtain Bitcoins anonymously, either through mining them yourself or through buying them at a crypto ATM or buying them off of someone you know for cash. And even then that might be a little bit sketchy because how do you know if that person's Bitcoin wallet was generated anonymously? If they get picked up by the feds who want to know, hey, where did these Bitcoins go? You know, why, why did you transfer them to this wallet that we can't identify in any of the exchanges? Your friend's probably going to rat on you. Let's just be honest. So it is a lot to expect from someone, especially someone who's new to all of this privacy stuff, to be able to purchase this in a way that isn't going to require them to give up any identifying information, especially if we compare this to the pitfall with Signal, which can just be easily gotten around by using a burner phone or using a private messaging app. That's gonna be much easier for a newbie to do than going the whole anonymous Bitcoin route. Threema even brags on their website uh, that this is one of the reason why they are more anonymous than Signal because they're saying, oh, you know, Signal requires you to give the phone number, which isn't anonymous. But again, I would bet 99% of people that are using Threema paid in some way that could be traced back to them. I'm really surprised that Threema doesn't have an option to pay through cash in the mail like you can do with Mulvad VPN, which has always accepted cash. I mean, you even identify yourself with a token similarly to how you do it with Mulvad. So I really don't get it. They should just add a cash option. Uh, but other than that, Threema does look to be overall better than Signal as a private messaging application. They are based in Switzerland, so there's not much to worry about in case of uh, bioluminescent government agents getting their hands on your data. Uh, there's no laws like the Cloud Act that legally allow Swiss authorities to you know, get your data off of their servers. And even if data were to be stolen from Threema servers, they don't really have any data about you other than encrypted messages, which are only held temporarily until they can be successfully delivered. There's also more features that Threema has compared to other apps like the ability to take polls, to get people's opinions on a subject, which is really good for getting normies to adopt it, especially Zoomers, because you know that Zoomers love their apps to have a million features in them. But unless your friends and family really value their privacy more than a few dollars, which most people don't, they aren't going to purchase it on their own. And getting a whole bunch of licenses for them, that can get expensive, especially when you factor in having to use you know, things like anonymous Bitcoins and buying the licenses from their website, which do seem to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, than buying it in the App Store, because when I checked, it was $2.99 in the App Store. So Threema, they really only need to start accepting cash and ideally for a cheaper price for the same price in the App Store, maybe even less considering that Google and Apple take a cut of it. Well, if they go through their own website, it would probably be the cheapest way. Um, yeah, they really need to just do that. And then I would say it is the absolute best daily driver messaging app. Until then, I think that Signal still has the crown.